the product manager. Actually, the, the, the correct answer is the user experience, not the product manager. Why the user experience? Because the interface is designed by whom? By the user experience. So he should go to the customer and ask for clarification, what he wants. Now, many people say, right, it's a good model, but we do not have that many people. We have one, two, or three people. Actually, Masef says that the minimum team you can have is only three people. If you have only three people, then you have one guy who is doing program management on your release operations. You have another one who is the architect and the developer. And you have the tester, the user experience, and the product manager talking to the customer. This is the minimum amount of people you can use with MSF model. Actually, if you have three people, these people should change the hats all the time. So today I do testing, tomorrow I design their face, and the next day I go to the customer. All right, who knows this picture? This is project management body of knowledge. This is, the, this is an ANSI standard from Project Management Institute, which is de facto standard for project management. PM book describes nine knowledge areas. You can see the knowledge areas at the top. Integration, management, Scope management, time management, cost management, quality management, HR management, communication management, human, uh, risk management, and procurement management. What MSF is saying? MSF is saying that I am using the PM book, and here you can see who is doing what. For example, who is doing program management? The, actually, program management is doing all of it. Uh, product management role. He is doing scope management because he talks to the customer. What about developers? Partially at the team level. So actually this table describes which role is doing what based on the project management standard. Now let's go to, the, to one discipline. This is the readiness discipline. What's the meaning of the readiness discipline? Who is writing Java in here? Java? .NET? C Sharp? What do you use? Visual Basic? <laughs> what application language do you use? Java, all right. Readiness means to prepare the people for what? For new technologies. To prepare the team for new technologies. If you look from bottom up, it says individual readiness, role readiness, sub-team, team project solution enterprise. Actually, the readiness discipline is how to prepare the people in your organization to face future technologies. If you want a new developer, what do you do? Do you find him from outside or you train your people inside your organizations? It depends. Actually, actually the readiness is about how to change the people inside your organization. All right, actually this is the, the process. Define what you want, assess your people, change, evaluate, and go back. Train, and so on. Let's go to the project risk management discipline. All right, risk management. Oops, from here. MSF and PM book says you must manage the risk proactively. What's the meaning of proactively? Before it happens, because otherwise it's too late. And as I say, if you don't attack the risks, the risks will attack you for sure. Who knows the definition of uncertainty, of infinity? Have you ever heard this saying, the definition of infinity by Albert Einstein? Einstein has said only two things are infinite, the universe and the human stupidity. And I'm not sure about the universe. Actually, this is about risk management. What's the meaning of risk management? Many times we are very sure that something will not happen or that something, what? 
will happen. Life says that this is not the case. Do you remember, probably, do you discuss a lot about the economic crisis in your country? Yes, everybody's doing it. Do you remember the oil prices last June? How much was it? 147, I think. Do you know in last June what was the expected price for the oil for last December? More, not 200, 300. And there were people buying future contracts at $300 per barrel. How much is it today? 38, 36. What it means, they lost millions of dollars because they were very sure that the oil prices will go up. That's risk management. The risk management discipline, actually the, the MSF risk, risk management discipline is based on the PM book. It says, find the risk, create a list of risks. Who is doing risk management in the room? Only one, all right, two, all right. It's a good number. Usually nobody is doing risk management because everybody is very sure, yes, I will do it. We will deliver the project on time, never. If you don't do risk management, you will never deliver it. Plan and schedule, let me show the picture from, from PM Book. PM Book says six processes. Process number one, are you going to do anything about the risk? If no, forget it. Keep working as you do. If you decide to do something about risk management, sit with your team down on the table and find all the risks. Find them. All uh, right. Because we have to deliver a project on, for this customer, uh, probably we will not get the specifications early, so we will spend more money. Can we do anything about this? Right, you must find ways to get the specifications early. In the construction industry, because we built the building in the winter, if it rains, what's going to happen? The project will be delayed. Can I do something? Do not build the building in the, in the winter, build it in the summer. So, find the risks and then find the possibility and the impact. This is the, qualita the qualitative risk analysis. And on the next step, you make this money, how much it's going to cost. And then you say how you are going to deal with the risks. So these five processes are in planning, and then the last one is in controlling. The last one is the, annual, the, the weekly meeting, which says, what happened to my risks? Do we have new risks? Has the possibility changed? And things like this. And let's go to the la actually the last. Let's go to the life cycle model of MSF. Do you know the waterfall model? Yes, everybody does. How, how we divide the project into phases. Actually, this was first mentioned by Royce Winston in IEEE, and it says that we must have, we must know a fixed set of unchanging requirements at the front of the project. Is, is this the case in uh, software development? No, because the customers change the scope. Is this the case in the construction industry? Yes. The construction industry is using the waterfall mode. Why? Because when you build the second floor, you cannot make changes on the first. That's life. Then, we have another model, which is the, the, the spiral model. What it says? We go around and around and around. Uh, release uh, beta 1, beta 2, beta 3, release candidate 1, 2, 3, and so on and so forth until we deliver the project. What's the problem with this model? We don't have milestones. We, we do not know when every phase ends. This was again published in IEEE 1988. Yes, I think 1988. What? Right, probably you have seen this also. This is by by Mewing, look at it, around and around all the time. What MSF is saying, all right, I'm using the spiral model with what? With milestones, that's it. It's not rocket science, spiral model with milestones. How many phases? Five, five phases. What is